We will now use the definitions that we've seen of a Cartesian product and of a relation to be a little bit more formal and a little bit more rigorous about an idea which I'm sure you've seen and used for many years in your mathematical careers and education, and that's a function. But we can define a function as a relation, i.e. a subset of A cross B, so that every element that I can pick from the set A appears exactly once as the first component in an ordered pair within this relation F. So what this means is that for each element little a from the set A, there is exactly one A, B, little a, little b, ordered pair in F. That it won't be that A might have three as the second element, or A might have six as the second element, or A might have 10 as the second element. No, there is exactly one for each different A, there is exactly one B, which makes up the second element of an ordered pair in F. So we can often write F of A equals B, but if the first element of the ordered pair is A, then under the relation F, the second element of the ordered pair must be B. And we write that F maps the set a to the set B. This might seem an unusual way of introducing a familiar function, but let's call the set A the set of all real numbers and B to be the set of all real positive numbers or zero. So the set of all non negative real numbers. And the relation F is the set of all ordered pairs x, x squared, such that x is a real number. So 1, 1 will be in the relation, 2, 4 will, minus 10, 100 will be. So in other words, for every element little a in A, the corresponding element little b in B is just a square of the value in A to make up the ordered pair little a, little b. So of course I can write down a huge list, obviously an infinitely long list, of all of the points that are in the relation F. And when I plot where those points sit, you may well recognize the familiar parabola because it's effectively saying if I pick an input value x, which is any real number, the output value or the second element of this ordered pair is that value squared. On the previous slide, we defined a function from the set A to the set B to be such that each element that I could pick from the first set A appeared in exactly one ordered pair of AB, where B is picked from the second set. But I didn't say anything about how many ordered pairs each B from the second set might appear in. But I do have a subset of functions, which I would call one to one functions, I think for obvious reasons. And a function is one to one if every time I pick an element x from A and I pick a y from A, the only way that f of x is equal to f of y is if I pick the same x equal to y. So what that's saying is that the second component of both ordered pairs, if they're the same, then the corresponding first component must be the same as well. So I can see fairly clearly visually from a graph whether a function is one to one 
by drawing a horizontal line. Like for example here, this function is very clearly not one to one. Because if I say the output is two, that my input squared is two, well, I know therefore the input was either the square root of two or the negative square root of two, either of those. Similar if the output is four, I know the input is either two or minus two. So that or tells me the function is not one to one. Each input has a unique output, but each output does not come from a unique input. So we can see this both algebraically, or we could see it visually, graphically. So I've got a linear function here that says if I give an input, which is a real number, then I'll get an output, which is a real number. And this function is the ordered pairs x and x plus 3, such that x is just a real number. So this is clearly seen to be one to one, because if I know that the output after I added three to a number was a given value, I can know what the input is. If I said I added three to the input and I got 10, I would know the input was seven. If I added three to the input and got minus three, I'd know the input was minus six. But I could also see that graphically. That's the line of x plus 3 plotted against x. And sure enough, I hope you can convince yourself that if you drew a horizontal line across this, it would cut the blue line once and only once. Now, I've obviously only drawn there a line segment. That line continues indefinitely upwards to the top right and downwards to the bottom left. So again, I can prove this algebraically. And if I wish to do that, I say, well, OK, let's assume I have an X and a Y such as F of X equals F of Y. That tells me that X plus three equals Y plus three. And if I subtract three from both sides, I've proven directly that that's telling me that X must equal Y. If I have a function f which maps a to b, I would call that function an onto function if every element that I can pick little b from the set b has an a, a little a, in the set a such that f of a is equal to b. So that basically says each element in the set b has one element that maps to it. So again, I can show that the linear function um, is onto, provided the, the slope term is non-zero. So if I say f of x is ax plus b, and I assume that a is not zero, then this will be a function, and it will be onto. And I can show that fairly easily because I need to show that if I write f of x equals y, then for a given y, I just have to show that I can solve to find this is the x that gave me that y. So if y equals ax plus b, subtract b from both sides and I'll get ax equals y minus b, divide by a, and I'll get x equals y minus b. I can divide by a, because I'm assuming a is non-zero. So what this does tell me is that whatever my y is, I can subtract b from it and divide by a, and I will get an x, such that um, f of x is equal to that y. And lastly, if I have a function which is one to one and which is onto, then I would say that function is a 
bijection. So it satisfies both classifications one to one and onto.